Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Andrew. Today we're going to talk about five Union veteran regimental histories. Regimental histories were written after the war. Regimental organizations got together and they decided to tell their story. And there are scores of these out there from the Civil War. I picked five Union accounts that I thought were particularly good. They're not representative of the whole war, and this is not an exhaustive list, but it's five good ones to get started with if you haven't read one of these before. The five books that we're going to talk about today are De Neuner, We Were the Ninth in its English translation, the 19th Maine Volunteer Infantry, the 72nd Indiana Volunteer Infantry of the Mounted Lightning Brigade, Three Years in the Army, the story of the 13th Massachusetts Volunteers, and the 24th Michigan of the Iron Brigade. The first book we're going to talk about today is De Neuner, which is the story of the 9th Ohio, a all-German regiment raised out of Cincinnati during 1861. They fought in the early part of the war in West Virginia, fighting at Rich Mountain and then fighting at the Battle of Carnifex Ferry before they joined the Army of the Cumberland where they fought at Mill Springs and then eventually Shiloh and all the rest of the campaigns of the Army of the Cumberland until they were discharged early in 1864 during the Atlanta campaign. The fascinating thing about the 9th Ohio is they're an all-German unit and this is originally written in German. Now, while I speak German, it's been a long time, and I've read the English translation that it's called We Were the Ninth. However, it's really fascinating to get into this culture. The German ethnic group is one of the largest in the United States, even now. And there are hundreds of thousands of German soldiers that served in the war. And this book does an excellent job getting to the spirit of the German soldier in the war, and especially the Western German soldier in the war. And this book is really entwined with that culture in a way that really makes it fascinating. Now, there's a lot of great first-person accounts in this, and I really think it's worth the chance to read. But especially if you're interested in the Army of the Cumberland, you're interested in German troops, and you're interested in just a little bit different perspective, it's a great regimental history. The next one we're going to talk about is the 19th Maine Volunteer Infantry. This was a regiment raised during the summer of 1862 that joined the second division of the second army corps in the army of the Potomac, and they served through the rest of the war. The reason I like this book is that it makes liberal use of the actual words of the soldiers themselves. You know, these veteran histories are one author from the regiment writing, and a lot of time they sanitize the words of the soldiers. They would relate stories, but it'd be the author's words and not the actual primary account. This author took a lot of letters, diaries, and other accounts from the soldier who was there or who had the anecdote and dropped it right in and told us who, who said that story, which is something missing from a lot of these regimental histories. And I think it makes it a richer experience as you get to hear the story from the soldier himself, not secondhand. The next one we're going to talk about is the 72nd Indiana Volunteer Infantry of the Mounted Lightning Brigade. For anyone in the Civil War, this is a sexy unit. This is Wilder's Lightning Brigade. But what's really interesting from the 72nd Indiana is they start out as a regular leg infantry regiment and they fight in some of the battles of the Army of the Cumberland. And it's interesting to see their transition into the mounted infantry. And the regimental historian does a great job giving really thorough descriptions of what's going on and telling a good story of the creation of Wilder's Brigade, its early days, and really detailing the campaigns. Anyone who's read a lot about Wilder's Brigade actually has read a lot of stories from this book because it's probably one of the best single sources on Wilder's Brigade. One of the things I love is there's a description of how the, how the men of the regiment had uh, modified all of their gear by 1864. Even though they're mounted, they're still technically infantry, so they're carrying knapsacks and other things like this on horses. But after a year of being mounted, they'd actually take the time to modify their gear to sit, properly on a saddle so that it was a little bit more comfortable. It's a really kind of cool insight into this unit that oftentimes gets left out of the history book. Next story we're gonna talk about is Three Years in the Army, the story of the 13th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. And I really like this story. It's incredibly well-written. The 13th Massachusetts enlists in early 1861. Uh, they join the Army of the Potomac. Uh, they are ultimately in the second division of the First Corps. And then when the First Corps is disestablished, they're moved over to the second division of the Fifth Corps and later the third division of the Fifth Corps. Uh, this, this regiment, uh, you know, they are in some of the thickest fighting in Antietam. They're right there in the cornfield. 
And then on the first day at Gettysburg, they're upholding the uh, the Mummersburg Road sector with uh, Robinson's division. And there's some great descriptions of battle in there, but I really love the way the author, uh, just his witticisms, his, his commentary in army life are very sharp. He's got a lot of great anecdotes that he tells really well. And you know, a lot of these veteran histories either are really bland or they're very, very, um, they just gloss over the details. This one is really specific about a lot of stuff. It really takes the time to not assume that you know a lot of things about what was going on or the war. And he actually tells pretty good history of the broader story of the Civil War while telling the story of this regiment. It's really one that I, I think that just to get the color of soldier writing after the war, it's really well written and it's really worth the time. The last book I'm gonna talk about is one that's close to my heart and it's O.B. Curtis's The 24th Mission of the Iron Brigade. Frankly, in my mind, it is the gold standard for regimental histories written for the North during the war. Not only is it long, it's well written, it has a lot of great sources in there, but the back of the book alone is worth it because Curtis has an exhaustive list of demographic information, biographical information, stories of who was wounded where, who made it through the service, who enlisted, things that are often glossed over by the regimental histories. Reading this, you can really track down the experience of a soldier because you're probably going to know where he was wounded. You're going to know if he got discharged. You're going to know if he enlisted later in the regiment, things like that. And it's a great amount of detail. Ultimately, though, this is the story of one of the most famous regiments in the Army of the Potomac and in the entire Civil War. And Curtis does an excellent job. The descriptions of the Battle of Gettysburg is really detailed and goes into a lot of the heroism this regiment gave during one of the most difficult fights of the Civil War, where they lost over 80% of their men in a few hours. And interestingly, Curtis was wounded early in the war. He wasn't there for a lot of the experiences of the regiment. And I think that speaks to the quality of the material that he had to work with the other primary council members of the regiment, that he had such a rich, vibrant story to tell. And it really is well done history for the time. You know, this is a time before history is, well, is cited well, where we know where letters come from. And he does a great job of putting in there where he's getting quotes, where he's getting accounts from and really crediting the soldiers where he's getting the information. And also at the end of the book, he's got some really great speeches from the post-war in there that really helped sum up what the 24th Michigan did during the war. These are five regimental histories that we talked about. Again, this list is not exhaustive. There are so many out there and some of them, there are so many great ones. I didn't get one from the Army of the Tennessee and I'm sorry guys who are interested in them. I just didn't have a good one that I knew offhand to talk about with them. I want to get more into them. If you can think of more, let us know. I'd love to go revisit this subject down the road. I want to say thank you to our patrons. It's your support that makes these episodes possible. And if you haven't thought about it, look at the link below and, and consider joining up with us. We'd appreciate anything you can do to help out. This is going to be a continuing thing for us to look at primary accounts in the world, whether regimental histories or private soldiers accounts is a way for you to make connections to these soldiers during the war. Take the time to read these books if you can. I really hope you enjoy them. I'm Andrew from Civil War Digital Digest, and we'll catch you next time.